So now let's shift away from the nervous system and get into the next big body system, which is the cardiovascular system. This is one that we're going to split into multiple chapters as well. We're going to have one chapter about blood, another about the heart, and then the last one about blood vessels. So let's go ahead and dive into our first one, the blood. We're going to try to cover the following things um, throughout this chapter. We're going to talk about the primary functions of blood, look at the fluid and cellular components of it, and look at some of the physical characteristics it has. We'll talk about some of the more important proteins and solutes that we can find in blood plasma. We'll also talk about the formation of the formed element components, which are the cells of the blood, and then talk about the structure and function of red blood cells and hemoglobin. We'll get into the white blood cells after that, and then the platelets. And lastly, we'll talk about the ABO and RH blood groups and blood transfusions. And within your book, you'll talk about a variety of blood disorders. So here, just kind of getting ourselves situated, we have a red blood cell, a platelet, and a white blood cell all next to each other in that order from left to right. So here is our red blood cell. Looks like a nice, almost like a beanbag chair someone sat in. Our platelet, which is the much smaller one here. And then our white blood cell here that looks, in my opinion, kind of like a poosh ball if you are old enough to know what those are. So let's go ahead and get into the overview of the blood. We're gonna talk about blood and transportation, defense and maintaining homeostasis. We'll get into the fluid component of blood and the three major types of formed elements and talk about their relative proportions we can find in a blood sample. Talk about some unique physical characteristics of blood and then the composition of plasma, including some of the very important solutes and plasma proteins we can find in it. So if we look at the composition of blood, Right, we have these three main components, the plasma, the buffy coat, and the hematocrit. The plasma, which if you notice is an, a normal one, is taking up a good chunk of the blood. We're looking at almost half. Um, this is going to be mostly water as well as proteins, nutrients, hormones, things that are suspended in that plasma. The buffy coat will be the white blood cells and platelets, and then everything here in red is the hematocrit. So we see that really the two main components are plasma and red blood cells, and that the white blood cells and platelets are a small fraction of this. So this would be what the one I'm looking at here on the left is the normal blood. If we were looking at someone who is anemic, they would have a lower than normal hematocrit level, right? They don't have as many red blood cells, which means they're not transporting oxygen around as well. And then polycythemia, this is where you have your elevated hematocrit, where it's too high. Right? Something like polycythemia is actually a type of cancer, and this is one that creates too many red blood cells. But there's also different colors of blood depending on whether or not it is highly oxygenated or not. Um, you may have heard the whole thing of like blood is blue when it's deoxygenated because people see their veins and think they're blue. That's not really the case. When we look at blood, it tends to be a very bright blood when it's oxygenated, so arterial blood. But when we find that venous blood or that venous blood that's less oxygenated, that's been deoxygenated, it's actually this deeper, almost like a maroon color, but it's not going to ever be blue. Not unless you're something like a sea creature. And since no one in this class is a horseshoe crab, um, we would not have blue blood. So this is the summary of the major blood components. I know this is a huge table, so if you want to pause and look through this, by all means do so. But we're going to talk about some, I'm just going to talk about some of these things going on here um, just to kind of help us make sense of it and that you can take your time with this a little bit later. Um, when it comes to the plasma, we're looking at about, again, half, roughly half, that can vary um, a little bit depending um, on who you are and are you male, female. Um, but we're looking at about half of your blood is going to be plasma by percent. And of that plasma, 92% of it will be water. So plasma is mostly water. We then have a 7% of that being plasma proteins. And then the small things are like other solutes, right? Regulatory proteins like hormones and whatnot. Um, but really there's the plasma proteins, these are the major players, which is albumin, globulins, and fibrinogen. Right. 
albumin. This is going to help kind of with the transport of certain things like lipids. This will also maintain osmotic concentration. And then with the globulins, this is a wide variety. This is like a big category. They can do various things like transport things around, maintain osmotic concentration, as well as serve as part of your immune response. And then fibrinogen, we'll see this when we talk about the platelets, this is going to be involved in blood clotting. With the formed elements, moving down from the plasma to the formed elements, the formed elements we're thinking cell or cellular components, this is gonna be that other third to half of your blood, most of which will be erythrocytes, also known as red blood cells, 99%. Uh, less than 1% will be leukocytes, which are your white blood cells, and then platelets make up the other fraction of a percent. So if you're, if you're looking at a cell um, in the blood, you pretty much could be taking a really high bet that it's an erythrocyte, just sheer numbers alone. And you guys will see this when we look at slides in class, in the lab that you'll see that most of the cells you find are red blood cells. And when you look for the different white blood cells, you actually really have to try to find them because they're not um, in near high numbers as the red blood cells. If we break those formed elements down, again, we have the erythrocytes. They don't have any subtypes, they're just red blood cells. Um, platelets, same thing, they just have their just platelets. But when we look at the leukocytes, the white blood cells, we see that there are multiple categories. Now we're not going to get into the nitty gritty in terms of all of the different types of cells involved with the immune system, but we're at least going to go over a few. And we can break the uh, leukocytes down into two main categories. The granulocytes, or the granular white blood cells, and the agranulocytes, or the agranular white blood cells. The granular thing just means we're looking for granules. Um, so the granulocytes will have these granules and the agranulocytes will not have them. Um, the way I like to describe them too is that the granulocytes are the fill family and the agranulocytes are the site family. That kind of helps you remember how to categorize them. Within the granulocytes, we have the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. And then the agranulocyte side, we have the lymphocytes and the monocytes. 